Hey everybody, welcome back to Ezra and Nehemiah. Now, I'm about to jump into a game. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's very complex, and if you want to get an idea of how I got where I am and how the basics work, you might want to hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go to the main run-through, or you can follow the links down in the show notes. But if you're ready to get back to 5th century uh, BCE Jerusalem, then here we go, folks. I was in a quandary. Which of these scribe spots do I take? If I take either of these, it's free. If I take the outer ones, it's expensive. And I gotta say, folks, I'm not crazy about it, but I'm kind of tempted to take this one, even though it means I've got to pay to the bank for standing on the shoulder of that uh, neutral scribe. Because this one says, hey, whenever I um, uh, train more Levites, I have to pay two less food. And so, and remember, every Levite I've trained is one less mouth I have to feed. So that's a pretty big deal. The other one I might want to take is this, which says, hey, when we get to Sabbath, automatically move your flame forward three steps. That's huge as well. But I think I care more, as I'm probably going to do at least one more red action. I'd like to get another Levite out. And by the way, when I do, that'll get me a stone, and I need that stone. Right now, I've got one stone and one wood. Remember, I've got my eyes set on refurbishing the fish gate, where I need two stone and one wood after I clear the golden rubble out of the way. So and, and this is a way I could get that stone. So yeah, I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come here, which means i got to give one silver to, well, if this were another player, uh, another player card, I'd give it to them, but instead, I'm just giving it to the supply. And so now, I've got two points at the end of the game. I do get one point immediately for uh, landing there, which is good, because I'm probably going to lose some points, because I'm not going to feed all my people before the uh, week is out. And from now on, every time, I've got one, two, three, four more Levites I could train before the end of the game or bring on and that's going to save me eight food and get me up to some very very big bonuses and now that I've done this anybody is able to jump up and grab either of these but they'd have to pay me and they'd have to pay the bank because it you know it goes all the way back down you you stand on somebody's shoulders you got to pay everybody who got you where you are all righty so that was it, I think, right? I did some trade, which is why I'm so low on food, but I had enough money to uh, make it up there. Yes, I'm done. So let's see where my buddy's going to go. Well, they're going to go to the horse gate, which is... Um, oh, the horse gate has been repaired, I think. No, the horse gate it belongs to them. So I didn't mention this. One of the things that happens as part of setup is, you know, in addition to you know getting your starting board and all that, each player ends up being the gatekeeper of one of the outer gates. And in a, uh, a solo or a two-player game, each one does two. I ended up taking these two because I like making gold at the old gate and silver at the sheep gate. And so my opponent took the other ones. They've got the horse gate. If I were over here, they'd have to pay me. But that is not where it is. They don't have to pay themselves. They're visiting their own gate to engage in trade, um, where they're going to spend their last silver to get another gold. All right. So they got two workers, four gold, and no silver. Now they've done all of this. Wait, hold on. Did I say the horse gate? Didn't I say the horse gate? This looks like the east gate. Oh, oh, right. Oh, because they're over here. Right. So they went to the horse gate. Oh, hey, 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 hey. They did not pay their last silver. That was that was the last trade they did. Sorry, folks. They want to trade silver for a blessing. If they had four silver, they'd get a blessing and do a camp action. But as it is, they're going to do one silver, not to get some more gold, but to work their way up. And remember, you want to move all these blessings up because once all of them cross these thresholds, you get big bonuses. All righty. So they have done their trade and they didn't pay nobody for it um, because it was their own gate. All right. So now if they have two workers and two gold, which they do, they're going to do some scribey action and they want to go as high as they can. If this were a down arrow, they'd want to go as low as they can. But instead, they want to go as high as they can, which means they're going to be paying me for that. So I'm going to get one silver, not from them, but actually from the supply. So I'm not complaining about that. And they are going to grab one of these two spots. And how do they choose? Well, they got to look back at their card. They've got these two. Um, and so you imagine this card. If this card were cut in two, their preferred target is on the right of half, which means they're going to take 
the right choice. So they have just blocked that off. They don't particularly care about the uh, bonus power or anything like that. They care about the points they get. Plus, they would get two food for being the first on that level, but for them, that's two silver instead. All right, and I got some silver, and now I could make it to the top row, although I need seven banners and a lot of gold. But hey, there's a lot of food for it too. All right, so that was it for them. We are up to my next turn. And again, I forget to draw a card. And again, the gray workers are hiding from me. You know what? That's okay anyway, because I knew I wasn't ready for this anyway. I needed to get one more stone. I was going to do another red action. That's what it was. And now things get tougher, because when I play a card, I'm going to lose one of these. Um, I'm going to lose a bunch. I, and you know what? I think I want to hold on to that gray. I'm about to do a red action, so I think we're going to cover up the teacher with, uh, with probably the musician or the carpenter because they give me access to two more red actions. This also gives me another gray. And I feel like I need those grays. I'm slowly but surely building up the grays. If, you know, I mean, the but there's only three left. The gray people, the, the wall builders have to come out at some point. But remember, I also need to think about what's the best trade. So these are both going to the water gate and the dung gate. Neither of which have been built, so the money will just accrue over there. And this is a way to um, get wood. or And this is a way to get food! I need food. I need food desperately. So I think, oh, but it's the musician, which won't give me more gray. But I know I need food, and um, so let's do that. Let's go with the musician. Okay, so this is the card I played. I can either engage in this trade, or remember, I could upgrade. But so far, I have not been focusing on my upgrades. That's a shame, because all of these upgrades are super powerful. At the end of the week, when we go into the seventh round, the Sabbath, and we rest, well, um, what we do is we set out any workers we haven't done anything else with, they can come out and basically farm the land. If I bring them over here, they give me two resources of the resource and coins. If they come over here, they give me more food. But if I had upgraded my farmland, they'd be giving me three food instead. But I have not been collecting the five uh, uh, cinder that I need to do that. And the thing is, I've got a lot of workers, so it's a good chance I'm going to be using them at the end of the week. And by the way, uh, they were sensitive to the thematic issues. Of, hey, you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. Uh, the rules specifically say that when I put them out here uh, at the beginning of the seventh round, this is to represent that this is what they were doing all week. All week they were working as farmers, and then on the seventh day, I got the food that they collected. So um, nice uh, touch for uh, thematic verisimilitude. But anyway, all right. So um, I'm just going to keep on doing trades and not upgrading and doing any of that stuff. And this trade says I got to spend one coin at the water gate, and then I could spend three coins, which I'm going to do to get four food. So all of my silver is gone, but boom, that just gave me enough food to feed my people. Oh, and one of the silver that I spent went to the water gate. So that becomes another good place to build. All right, I've done my trade. Now, we're going to do some red actions. It's going to be, or it could be a blue action, but I don't have any coins, and I need money. Um, and I don't have any, I need money and gold. I could do these, but no, that's not good. I'm doing a red action, because so I've got one, two, three, four, five. That means I could do a level five banner action. And don't forget, well, although, although, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to train uh, another, another, Levite, right? I'm going to put them here. That would normally cost me three food, but because I've got that power, it only costs me one, baby. So that's a thing of beauty, and I get that stone. So it's like the plan is coming together. I'm very happy about that. So now I've got three Levites um, and five banners that I can split amongst them. Here's the problem that I didn't think about. What do you do? What do you do when you are um, engaging with these? You give up the resources. I need the resources. No! Oh, no! I need these resources to build the fish gate. Although, you know what? The water gate's getting pretty attractive, too. How's the water gate looking? It's over here. It needs... Oh! It's, it's literally the exact same thing. There is one stone on it. They both require three. They both need... Oh my gosh, it's literally the exact same thing. Arr! But that's okay. You know, I've got two more days. And my last day could be going and um, doing one of these gates. Because right now, I am going... Oh my gosh. I have... I have... 
I'm going to give up. Mm. All right, let's look at my hand. Next turn, I could get some stone or some wood by doing any of these trades. You know what? Now I'm regretting. Why didn't I put this one out? I could have gotten some wood instead of some food. I need the food to feed people and not lose points, but I need the wood. If I had done with the wood, what was I thinking? You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I'm calling an audible. I did not. Sorry, folks. I, um, I did. Oh, and by the way, this is a, this is a bag of money. That is incorrect. It should have been a bag of food. Silly me. Um, I did not spend three bucks to get four food. I'm back at one food. I have still got my three bucks, right? Because I did not play the musician. Instead, I played the, uh, the carpenter, which meant the coin went to the dung gate, not the, uh, the uh, water gate. And that allowed me to either give up money to get more wood or just get one wood. I'm just gonna give up some more cash and get some more wood right? That's what I did. That would have been the smarter play. I can still have this card. My last card could be to play this, and hopefully by then I'll have some more money to make some more food. We'll see. But in the meantime, though, I've done my trade. A slightly different trade uh, that put me in a different situation. I could send this out to increase my gray, but I, there's nothing else I can do because I have not upgraded these. So this person's just... I'm telling you right now, folks, they're probably a farmer, and they've probably been working over here the whole week to try and make some food. Probably, but uh, we don't know. You know, they're 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 like Schrodinger's working or uh, meeple. We're not quite sure what they're up to yet. But anyway, um, so I am going again. I've got one, two, three, four, five, right, and um, and three workers. So first of all, I want to give up one of these wood, and it costs three to burn them on the pyre, so I can move forward, and that would give me a coin. And, uh, let's see, moving up two would give me nothing, but it would also give me a coin. So that's something. That's nice. But, remember, I can also know, if I put them in the top spot, I get another worker who I could pretend was another farmer all this time. And that's another way I could be making food. I think I need to do that. So, my first Levite and five of my uh, banners put that up there, which gave me one victory point and one more worker. Right. I've still got two more Levites, right? So I could do two more actions. But um, I've got no more banners. One, two, three, four, five. Urgh, why didn't I take uh, oh good old Zeb here, whose name is so hard for me to pronounce? Urgh, so that's kind of wasteful. I am literally wasting. Because, hey, I could say, you know what? I'm just going to generate another banner. And then I could do an action with him. But one... Oh, but... Ugh, one banner would be enough for me to burn another cinder and move my flame forward one to get a coin. But I have no cinders. I have no cinders. So I am wasting two of these. But you know, I almost don't even mind because I only paid one to get him here and he'll help me later on in the game. So, and I got the worker, which is going to be two more food at the end of the year. So it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I do feel bad because I made this big investment and oh well, say lovey. It's all right. So that's it for me. And then my buddy says, hi, I'd like to go to the old gate. And the old gate is my gate. Hey, welcome to the old gate. And, um, okay, unfortunately, the trade they would like to engage in is three coins. For points, they don't have the money. So they can't go to my gate and pay me for my gate. Urgh. So instead, they're just going to move over here. And now they've got the silver. But, uh, of course... It's like they knew that that was my gate and it would help me. But, all right, so, yeah. so now, what do they want to do? Do they have one worker and one gold? Yes, they do. So they want to do their top thing. They want to move in on the lowest level scribe that they can. Um, let's see. And uh, they've, got, they've got three choices. So you break this into three, and their thing is on the left. So they want to move in here. And they are going to um, take that. They will bump this up. Remember, I talked about this in the main, that these uh, neutrals, they get bumped out of the way, offering more stuff. Right. And um, because it's a level one, they pay one gold for that instead of the normal banners and silver and all that. They pay two gold, three gold, four gold. So they pay one gold to get in. And they will go on ahead and claim Zeb. So if I wanted it, can't use it now. But they should get two food, which they don't get. They get two silver instead. All right, so that was it for them. All right, and I forget, I forgot to draw. 
Where have you been all my life, Mason? I mean, man, you are an attractive Mason. I've got to say, he's been out there, uh, you know, getting uh, dolled up for, for his big show because I think it's finally time. Mason, what am I going to do? Now, remember, I can't cover this up. I've got to cover up the soldier or the singer. What do I think I'm going to do for my last turn? Am I going to try to do a red or a blue action? I think I'll probably do a red action because I've got more stuff. Yeah, because I don't have enough money over here. So I will cover up the singer knowing that my last action... Oh, no, but it doesn't matter because my last action is going to cover up the soldier anyway. Urgh. All right. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. It's the fact that, hey, I'll have a gray and another gray, and then I could have another gray. So I could do two rubble strew, uh, clearing things, potentially. Potentially. Oh, man. I have run out of food. I have made a series of terrible mistakes. I'm going to regret not having kept all that food earlier, folks. But we are going to do this now. Uh, Mason, cover up. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, well, co no, cover up this one because, hey, that's another gray, right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six base banners. If this comes over here, I bump up to eight. But if I do that, that's one less farmer to feed my people. That is four points lost. I say, no, six was enough. Six was all I ever needed for either the fish gate or the water gate, right? And I've been, it's, it's been about this fish gate the whole game for me. So I've got six banners to spend. So when you're doing a gray action, you pick any one location. Doesn't matter how many banners, you can only work in one location. I am choosing to work over here. Right, and now there's a little cheat sheet right here that says how many gray banners. It takes three gray banners to clear out a gold, which I just did. And by the way, I am almost full. I only have one more storage space because I have not upgraded this because I'm not doing my upgrades. You can only do so much, folks. But anyway, so I spent three of my six banners to clear that out, and now I need to spend three banners to um, actually rebuild the gate. And that requires one wood and two stone which it just so happens that I have. Well done me. And I will take, which one? The fish gate. And I will put it here. Oh no, I've realized I made another terrible mistake. <sighs> right, because I have to give up one of my future farmers and I will get a coin for it, but that's two less food. But I put this here, I'm gonna get four points at the end of the game. This is my gate and um, Oh my gosh. Oh, and I get all these coins. And there's no way to buy food. Oh man. Oh, this is terrifying. This is terrifying. But anyway, that was the Mason action. Oh, oh, oh. And let's not forget, I also could do a uh, trade with this Mason, which is give up stone. If I'd done that, I wouldn't have what I need to make more money. Mason. But I had to do it. But no, I don't have to do it now. This could be my final turn. This could be my sixth turn. And what would my fifth turn have been? Because I've really screwed myself. You know what? I'll just live with it. I'll just live with it. But folks, you can see just how incredibly important proper planning is and how incredibly badly I'm doing with my proper planning. Oh, what I should have done, I should have... Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right, so I'm not going to engage in trade because I have no stone. I do not have four stone, three gold, uh, five cinder, eight coins. I've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can't do that upgrade. Or four wood. So I can't do anything. So I literally wasted an auxiliary action. I didn't do anything. Because I'm a dummy. But I'm going to draw my card this time and not forget. All right. And hey, there's some more. There's uh, the jeweler who can do more gray actions. Right. Okay. So I made it. But I was focusing on the wrong things. But hey, I got a lot of money. That's going to help, right? That 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 can't hurt. Duh. All right, anyway, though. My buddy says, hi. Boom. I'd like to go to the muster gate, which is owned by nobody. It was repaired before we got here. And they say, hey, I'd like to spend a coin to... And they're not going to, of course. Um, it just goes back to supply. They couldn't pay me at mine. And why are they doing that? So they can spend one, two, three, four, five, which they happen to have, to get two more um, followers. Right, and now, do they have two gold and one follower? Yes, they do. Then they want to do, they 
are going to build a gate. Uh, not to be outdone, they want to show me how it's done properly. So what do they do? They start at the muster gate, which is already built, and this says go clockwise. So they go until they find the water gate. So they are going to build that. So first of all, they're going to clear all this out, and then they need two stone and a wood, but they, they just do everything with gold. So they're going to spend all three of their gold and make the water gate. Boom. And get those coins back and come over here. And, oh, they get a, they get to take another upgrade. So they are one step closer to unlocking bonuses off of their blessings. And they've got four points for that, just like me. Now, there's another interesting thing that we're probably not going to get to, but I should probably mention while we're here talking about it. The interesting thing about gates is, all of a sudden, players wanting to do trade at those gates have to pay you. That's awesome. But there's another thing as well. If I were to, on a future turn, you know what? I might even do it. I might. I was going to say, oh, I might. Maybe. If, on a turn, if you build a wall that is next to a completed gate, you get the bonus out of that gate, and so does the person owning that gate. So there's like this whole extra thing. And by the same token, if there had already been a completed wall here, and then this gate got built here, then um, the completed wall being next to the gate would have triggered that bonus for the wall owner and the gate owner again. So that's a cool thing. But anyway, we'll worry about that in a bit, because it's my last turn. And I've got to cover up this soldier which means I'm not going to have a lot of blue. I've got all this money to do more scribe stuff, but I do not have enough blue. Do I? I nope. Nope, I can't. I can't, because i got to put it here. I'd only have two blue. I can't get more there. So you know what? I am going to do some more. I am going to bring out the jeweler. We're going we're gonna to go back. We're going we're gonna to build that wall. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, um, seven. I've got seven, and if I need to, I can go up to 8, 9, and give up more food and lose more points. But anyway, let's just start with 7. Where am I going to pick? What am I going to clear out? And in a perfect world, you want to pick a place that will generate enough resources so you can build afterwards. And you know what I'm thinking? I would like to build next to my fish gate because my reward would be I'd get another uh, follower who will generate more food for me. As opposed to, oh, this will just generate food, so that's something too. I could generate more gold, more coins, more um, you know, uh, cinder and wood, or more stone and coins. If I, I'm you know, because there's all of these different. Uh, so if I'm gonna build, I want to build next to a gate, and really, I'd rather build next to mine next than my opponents, because I'd like to be the only one to get the benefit, as opposed to giving them a benefit as well. So my eyes turn over here with my seven, my seven. Can I clear out and build something? If I were to clear this out, I would need um, wood and two stone, and I would not have it. If I were to clear this out, I would need three wood, and I do not have it. Oh, and by the way, the jeweler lets me get some gold right now. Hold on a second. Before I go, that is not a good trade for me. Ah, but you know something else I could do? Something else I could. Could I clear out enough cubes so that instead of doing whatever the trade is, could I get enough cubes to actually get one of these things built? Because so far, I've always been doing the trade and then the main action. I could do the main action and then the trade or the upgrade. So hold on a second, jeweler. Maybe, maybe there's another option. Maybe there's another way. Yeah, you know what I could do? I could clear out all this gold and that cinder. It would take all my seven. 3 plus 3 plus 1, right? Cinder is 1. So all 7. I would not have enough to actually build, but I'd have the re I'd have the 3 gold I need to upgrade this. And if I upgrade this, I could then deploy my person to get 1 food and 2 towards any. And that would be awesome for the next week. It's a little late now. But don't forget, I need to be thinking about what other deals could I do. Because... Remember, I was always going to go back to the musician, and I've got the money to get the food. It's not too late to feed my people! Okay, change of heart, everybody. Change of heart. Alrighty, let's go. Let's all go to the musician. And what can I do for my last turn of the first week? I can do my main action. I can uh, do a trade action, and I can, well, there's no good um, merchant actions, and there's an elder action that won't help me because it would have made me better, so I'm just saving you to be a farmer for later. Right, but I might not need to be the farmer because I'm going to do this trade action. No, I need one coin! Why do I need one coin? Oh, folks, 
I was really, really tempted when I went on to the second level to take this power. Because this power says, hey, whenever you're doing a trade, the bottom one, the one that costs the most, you get a two coin discount. If I had this power right now, then it would only cost me three coins to get six food. <sighs> but I'm just going to do three coins because I, uh, I got to spend one to the water gate. Oh, wait, do I own the water gate? No, I have to give one coin to my opponent because they, why didn't I build the water gate? Okay, folks, here's the deal. Remember how the water gate and the fish gate were the exact same thing? Remember that? And um, I could have just as easily gone for one or the other. I would have made the same amount of money. Everything was the same. And if I'd been thinking, I would have known that my final turn was to do the water gate. I knew. I even talked about it at one point. This was going to be my last turn because I needed the money to make the food and I needed to go to the water gate so I didn't have to pay somebody else. So if... Instead of building the fish gate, I had built the water gate. Nothing would have changed for me. The only thing that would have changed is... Oh, no, you know it would have been? I would have had one less coin. I still wouldn't have had enough. Never mind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to spend three measly coins to get four food. But you know what? That's eight points I'm not losing. So I can't complain too much. All righty. So thank you, musician, for saving my people from my incompetence. All right. So I'm engaged in trade. And now, what am I going to do? For my main action. Well, you know what? We're readying it up. One more. This is how we started. This is how we are going to get this uh, temple totally decked out. Alrighty. So, I've got one, two, three, four. Four red. But I can say, I can go up to six. So, I'm going to use these two for that, which means I'm only going to do one action. Um, which is more than I need, because with five, I can donate. I'm just going to donate this gold I've got lying around. Um... And that gives me two points. One, two. Where was I? One, two. And I get another follower who will need one food to stay happy, but will generate two food. So I, I'm pretty happy about that. Okay. So that was it. And I've got one red banner left over. Um, and again, if I had some cinder, I would burn it and move forward and get a coin. Which, if I'd made that coin, I could have... But again, if I have, because remember, you can do these any order you want. I could have done this first, moved forward, gotten the coin, and then done the trade at the end instead of at the beginning. I could have done that if I had some cinder. But I've got stupid wood. Remember all that time ago when I said, oh, I'm going to go for wood because it's more flexible? I'm wishing I'd gone for cinder now because I'd move up one step there. But I didn't. All right. Anyway, though. So that was it. I did my trade. I did my main action. And I think that's it for me. And uh, we'll see. Here's the final card. They only have one of each of these cards, but they got a bunch of these. So they're coming over to the Fountain Gate where they own it. So they do not have to pay to get in. And they're going to pay one coin to move forward one step on a blessing. They're getting ever closer to these bonuses. And now they say, do I have two workers and a gold? No. Do I have two gold? No. Okay, if that's the case, just go dig. I will go dig. And they want to start at the Fountain Gate. There's nothing there. They're going to do the next thing. They just got themselves two wood. They don't care about wood. Some Somehow for them, they've got the touch and they turn it into gold. So that was it. Folks, oy, it's been a bumpy ride. We have finished the first week, or we finished the first six days. And then on the seventh day, we rest. It's time to prepare for the Sabbath. So first of all, farmers and laborers and resolve the prophet's judgment. So I have two workers who did not go anywhere else. If I put them over here, they will generate four food for me. If I put them over here, they will generate two resources and then two resources or one resource and two coins. So I could get like three resources and two coins, but I need food. Red Warrior needs food badly. How badly? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11. I need 11 food to keep everybody hale, hearty, and happy. Uh, the Levites, they're, they're fed by the... So I don't have to worry about them. Ones that are still in supply, I don't have to worry about them. So I need 11 food. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's put both of these to work and give me 4 more. Alrighty, there's a 5 and 1 back. That's not good enough, folks. Um, I, although, man, I have expanded really, really fast. I mean, I'm you know just rocking that. This is a bit odd to have so many workers, so many mouths, so fast. And the problem I have is I didn't really make good use of them because I didn't upgrade these, so I would have had uh, more actions to do. 
Urgh. All right, but anyway, so let's feed. What was it again? Let me just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. And I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is uh, four points I lose. Ouch. One, two, three, four. So I'm almost back to where I started. I've only earned one point. But this workforce will help pay off over the course of the rest of the game. I mean, I, I can get more scribes out. I can get more Levites, and then I don't have to pay them. And the, the more Levites I have, the bigger the rewards. And the more that I can, you know, I mean, so I've, I've, it's fine, it's fine. So I've lost some money there. All righty. And then there's the Prophet's Judgment. I haven't even mentioned the Prophets, folks. They were as part of setup. This card says, and there's a few different ones, and they're two sided, so it can be different from game to game. It said, "Hey, put one at step four and one at step seven. So I did that. This says how much I should have gotten my flame going, because I did not get it to be in between the two of them. They are displeased, and it says lose one point. And just like that, in the whole first week, I've made no points. I'm back to where." started. Now, if I'd made it in between them, I would have gotten a blessing. And if I had made it further, I would have gotten a bigger reward, but say la vie. And I mean, because I was doing too many other things and I let, I did not, um, um, fan the flames of the, of the, uh, fire. And so I faced, um, some bad judgment from the prophets. Okay. So then continuing on, Pay one for, okay, I, I made my extra stuff, I got my judgment, because that could have gotten me what I needed, maybe, but it did not. All right, one food per worker, excluding the Levites. Lose two per worker, I did, you saw me do that. And oh, this is fun. Tuck the required character cards and score all tucked character cards. Folks, we're not done with these six cards yet that um, I've played over here, because now I have to take all of them uh, ignoring the ones in my hand, the one I did not play, and we have to say goodbye to Ever for one of these. Because there's an element of the cards I didn't mention. End game scoring for how far you move the flame. How many top tier um, scribes you've got. How many orange, uh, whatchamacallum, the uh, blessings. Or the red blessings. Or how many walls have you rebuilt. Or the one I think I like, how many Levites do you have. So, I got to say goodbye to one of these. And of based on what I, you know, I haven't gotten really any blessings. I don't have any top tier scribes. I think of all of these, this is the one that works the best for me. So I'm going to say goodbye to the singer and my ability to sell gold for coins. Um, and my ability to have three banners. But on the other hand, I now have one permanent gray and one permanent red banner for the rest of the game. And at the end of the game, I will get a point for every one of my Levites. So you better believe, with my power of getting them for cheap, I'm going to get that filled before the game is over, which is really going to make me focus in one direction and not let my flame falter again. Alrighty, anyway though. So that was that. Alrighty, and after the Sabbath, we move the prophets up because they're going to go up to steps... What is it? 8 and 12. So we have to get the fire even higher for bigger rewards. Um, oh, the uh, altar leader gets a new worker. And you know what? Hey, that's a benefit for me because we're, it looks like we're tied, but whoever got there first is the winner. So I'm the leader. I just got an extra worker. And this is all summarized somewhere on the board too. Yeah, it's right here. Hey, whoever's in the lead on the flame, that was me, just barely, gets a free worker. Yay. So that's good. I've got almost my entire... I think there's just one more person I need to hire. That's crazy. All righty. Um, shuffle all my character cards uh, You know, uh, to my character board to get a draw pile. Draw a character card to hand. And um, that's it. So, right. The other cards... Oops, not going to go back into my hand. I keep the ones that were in my hand. So these all shuffle. I've got a new draw pile. Don't know what the order is going to come out in. One of them comes out to go into my hand, and we're ready to go. And folks, of course, the AI has a similar, simple version of all the same stuff. But I'm not going to go through all that, because I think you've got now a basic idea. We're going into week two. I... I had a ro rocky first week, but I want to do trades at the fish gate. Who does trades at the fish gate? Somebody does, right? I didn't just fire them, did I? I'm sure I didn't. All right. Um, I want to be using that soldier and paying myself to... Oh, but I'm almost out of people to hire. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll worry about that in a while, folks, because by now you have a pretty good idea of what Ezra and Nehemiah is all about. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.